That is not my title. Um, and if this was PowerPoint, PowerPoint karaoke, then I might have a place to go. But that is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I'm going to be talking about drones today. This is a project I've been working on with my colleague Nathan Matias. And I want to I ask, can drones be made civic? Um, can they be a civic technology? Can they have certain values um, that we think about? Now, when we, act, when we usually think about drones, we think about things like the Predator drone. We think about warfare. We think about drone strikes. Um, and this is not necessarily how drones are being used. You know that they are being they're, they're becoming smaller. They're more civilian uses for drones. And they're being used more and more in the civil sector for journalism, mapping, um, monitoring of human rights, development issues, humanitarian issues. Um, and these are really great, but there's still some problematic aspects of drones. You can't have a conversation with a drone like you would in other kind of civic engagement spaces. They're a form of surveillance in the very literal sense of, you know, surveilling over you. Um, and so how can we think about them through the perspective of participatory civics, kind of making media um, as to, do, to make change um, as a way to make drones civic? And so a good reference for this is the work of Public Lab um, and what they've been doing with grassroots mapping. So this is some uh, uh, imagery of, from the deep water oil spill off the Gulf of Mexico. And they worked with community groups there um, in order to map those areas that were affected um, and, and really understand you know, like how we can take this technology and solve a real problem, build a community around it, and have a sense of ownership over that. And so that participatory civics aspect comes through a participatory design process. I'm going to offer four steps by which I think we can make drones more civic by thinking about participatory design uh, for them. And so one goes back to this ownership idea in terms of making sure that, that the people, the community, the conservationists, uh, the, uh, the community members that are, that are caring about a particular problem are involved in the decision making around what goals are set, how's it going to be used, what data is going to be collected, how is it being used to use a set of shared values um, that that community may adopt. So once again, the public lab did this when they brought, when they worked with the community members in New Orleans who wanted to do that golf mapping, they're setting the goals here. Um, they're the ones that are actually doing the mapping themselves. Um, another group um, out of Georgia Tech with Carl DeSalvo was working with foragers in Atlanta to see if drones could extend their work in their communities to, to grab the fruit off the trees that would otherwise not be used in the city. And so that's some ways that we could do it. Um, an, uh, the second way that we can use participatory design is through actually doing knowledge transfer. So these would be the people are creating the drones themselves. They're learning how to build them, repair them. They understand that technology um, in a way that allows them to have a sense of ownership over it uh, in that dimension. So Public Lab, once again, when they're doing the grassroots mapping, they now have a kit that people can use that can use some local uh, materials to customize it for their particular context. Um, and they can report, repair it themselves using very simple materials. A group called Digital Democracy has been working in Guyana with the Wapachana people who are trying to monitor their lands um, with aerial surveillance. Um, and they're actually building the drones here. They're soldering the electronics together um, and making sure that they can repair them and use them themselves. Number three for participatory design practice for drones is around the data analysis, the interpretation of all of this photography and other data that they're collecting. How can they be involved in that process? Because often that's when it's handed over to the experts that can do the statistics, do the data viz. Here's a project called Data Therapy by my colleagues Emily Bargov and Rahul Bargov, who work with communities to understand the data embedded there, find the story in it, and then visualize it in a way um, like murals that they can all participate participate in and don't require those coding skills. But there's also tools that can take that, those, those, those aerial photography, stitch them together automatically for people who don't know how to program it themselves, like MapMitter from Public Lab or the Open Drone Map. Number four, infrastructures around this stuff. You can think about it in terms of the open data movement. How do we collect this data together that these, that these drone um, uh, civil society actors are, do, are using, create best practices around it, such that this can be shared with a wider community? And so groups like OpenStreetMap that have been doing this for years with mapping projects, creating layers that are open and accessible for others to use. Similarly, Conservation Drones is an organization that's pretty new for folks using it for conservation purposes, trying to do that same work. 
Now, can drones be made civic? There's still barriers. There's still the fear around the military aspect. There's privacy issues for the folks that aren't invited to participate in these participatory design sessions. And there's licensing issues where, you know, the regulations aren't even in such that we could have people uh, pilot some of these things. But I think it's still important to think of participatory design practices making drone civic. And it's always important to think of making civil society applications ethical and representative. That's always worth it. So thank you very much. So.